chapter 17, beginning at verse number 1, Then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible, but that the offenses will come, but woe unto him through whom they come, if it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and be cast into the sea, than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves, that thy brother trespass against thee. Rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. Take heed to yourselves, that thy brother trespass against thee. <coughs> Rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again, uh, turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. And the apostle said unto him, The Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, If ye be, if ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto the sycamore tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey. But which, but which of you, having a servant plowing or feeding cattle, will say unto him, By and by, when he is come from the field, Go and sit down to meat? And will we not rather say unto him, Make ready wherewith I may sup and gird myself, and serve me till I have eaten and drunken, and afterward thou shalt have eaten and drink? <coughs> The, dost thou be thank? Excuse me. Doth he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I troll not. So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, We are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. I want to go back to verse number one because he says. He told his disciples, it is impossible, but that offenses will come. Did you know life will have a lot of offenses take place in your life? And things will happen in your life that you don't understand. Uh, some people will offend you. Uh, just a lot of things that will come our way. It's just a human thing of life. Things will happen. We studied the book of Habakkuk last Sunday, and in chapter 1, he said that Habakkuk asked, Why is Babylon coming into Judah when they're worse than we are? And as I said last Sunday, God uses sometimes our enemies to get our attention. Sometimes God uses our enemies to show us that we may have the same thing in our own life, and we need to get it rectified in our own life. And Amen. And, uh, you know, I, when I first was a Christian, there was a guy that had a lot of money in the church, and it seemed like he wouldn't help anybody, and I, I just kind of hated the guy because I thought he was a tightwad, and he could loosen up a little bit. But then as God began to speak to me, it was, he was speaking to me. I was like him. I was tight like him. I didn't have as much money as he had, but I was as tight as him, and so his sin was reflecting my sin in my life. And sometimes God uses the sin of other people's lives to reflect maybe the same sin in their own life and maybe in a different degree. But we need to take care of those things. Amen. Amen. And uh, another thing is it may show us how bad our sin is through another person's life. We can look at somebody else and say, oh, look at how terrible that is. But we may be doing the same thing in a different area or a different part of our life. And so we have to allow God to work in our life and show us the air of our way. And, and uh, we have to allow that to happen. But it is impossible to go through life without having offenses happen to you. Some people won't appreciate what you do. <laughs> You know, I apologize to people all the time because I'm, I think I'm becoming like a lot of the world where we don't say thank you enough. You know, and I'll call somebody up and say, did I say thank you to you? Because 
It's like you take something and then do you say thank you? And, you know, we need to be a thankful people. We need to be a people that uh, reach out to one another. But offenses will come our way. People will offend us. I mean, things will happen at work that will offend us. I mean, a lot of things will happen that will offend you. But look at what he says in the next part of the verse. But woe unto him through whom they come. He says, if, if it, it would be better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and to be cast in the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. So he's saying offenses will come, but offenses do trip people up. Did you know that? I've seen people drop out of church because they were offended. I've seen a lot of people fall by the wayside because of offenses that have come their way. But he says, be careful how you live. Now parents, you know, over the years I've had parents tell their kids, do as I say, not as I do. Now that's a bad philosophy. Did you know that? It really is. Because the best sermon you can ever teach your children is through your example. Amen. Amen. It's through your example. You will teach your children more by example than what you try to say to them. And so, you know, if it's wrong for the kids to watch that dirty movie, it's probably wrong for mom and dad. Amen. Amen. You know, it's funny, you know, well, we're adults now, we can watch any kind of movie we want, but if it's wrong for the children, it's probably wrong for us as adults as well, right? Yeah. I mean, we've got to watch movies that glorify God and keep our thoughts clean and, and just glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, <coughs> our children will know what we do and decide. I mean, they're not stupid. They see the things that we do, and so we have to be a good example. There's another passage of scripture that tells us that, you know, be better as well, just like verse 2, that we would be drowned instead of being a, a stumbling block to children. And look at all the stumbling blocks that are in the world today. Adults who are making their children stumble and stumble and stumble. And he says in verse 3, Take heed to yourselves, if thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. Now, somebody will sin against us. Did you know that? People will sin against us. Amen. But as a believer today, we have been forgiven of our sins. I am so thankful that Jesus Christ doesn't say how many sins he will forgive and then it's a cutoff. He keeps forgiving, doesn't he? Yeah. Now, I don't know who has sinned the most in this church, but whoever you are, raise your hand. No. <laughs> but whoever it is, Jesus Christ has forgiven you of every sin that you've committed. And you know, if you go to him and confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. People ask me, can I be a forgiving person? I don't think you can. I don't think the average person in the flesh can forgive people. I know I struggled with it over the years because some people know they're scamming you. Some people know they're going to take advantage of you. People know when they're lying about you. People know when they're doing dirty work behind your back. But the Bible says... If they get it right, you need to forgive them. Uh, I don't want to. <laughs> but he says you need to forgive them. Amen. But then he makes it worse in the next verse. <laughs> because he says in the next verse, And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt what? Forgive him. Forgive him. Now we talked, I think it was Wednesday night service, we talked about the family and how that, there was a verse that we read, how we're supposed to forgive seven times, 70 times. 
That means we don't keep track of how many times we've hurt somebody else or vice versa. And, you know, Kelly has forgiven me more than I've forgiven her because she's a saint. I'm pretty close, but not quite there yet. But, you know, we, we do have problems in our life. We do fail, don't we? We're human. You know, years ago, I told my wife, I felt so bad, we had a fight. And I know you husbands and wives never have a fight. But we used to have quite a few at one time. And, and we got together and prayed. And I said, honey, I never want to get in an <coughs> argument with you again. <coughs> well, how's that working out for you, Pastor? I failed again. Uh, we've had a few fights over the years, but it's getting less and less and less. By the grace of God. <coughs> There are fewer and fewer and fewer. But you know, when we do have a fight, it's so. My, I go to my wife and I say, Honey, will you forgive me? I wasn't going to act this way again and I failed you again. And she, her famous words is, Honey, I love you. I forgive you. And uh, we go on in our marriage and it stays strong because uh, you have to learn to forgive. You have to forget the past. You have to go on. And we all fail one another. We fail, and we have offenses that come against us. But then he comes up with a whole nother verse here right after this. And he says this, And the apostles said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. Now that's an interesting verse, and I looked it up in the Greek, and in the Greek it's not asking for m more faith. But in the Greek, it, it says that we already have the faith. Keep the faith going. That we all have the faith to keep us sustained in this life. If you ask Christ to save you, you had faith to believe that his blood would shed, you know, shed for your sins. And, you know, we have faith throughout the day when we do everything. If we go eat at a restaurant and go down the road and that guy's staying on the right side and you're on the left side or vice versa, well, that go... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're on the right side, you're on the left side, coming this way. You know, we have faith in so many things. But as I say this in the Greek, he's saying, you have the faith, just keep it going. Keep going with your faith that you have. That you can get through the tragedies that come your way. That you can keep it going until the end. Romans 8, 28, still in the Bible, do you know that? All things work together for good to them that love the Lord who are called according to his purpose. Now there's a lot of things I question God. Now yesterday I was with a, at a business for a little while and and there was a doctor and the doctor has he's going to buy another business but he told me, he said, I would just like to get out of this world. He said, if I had enough courage I'd take my life. And, uh, and I talked to another guy who came to my house last night for a while, and he said, you know, I think suicide is in the hearts of a lot of people. And I said, well, maybe that's true, but uh, uh, if you know the Lord, you know that the Lord is going to get you through whatever is happening in your life. And people do have pressures in their life, financial pressures, you know, peer pressure, financial pressure, marriage problems. I mean, all these things come into our life. But if we have the Lord Jesus Christ, I think we have enough faith to get us through Amen. those difficult times where we don't have to call it quits and pull the plug. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so he wants us to, he says, increase my faith. Well, you know, like Daniel... When he found out he was going to be, you know, lunch that day, <laughs> be cast into the lion's den, he didn't quench at all. He just kept his faith going. He prayed to the Lord, and we know the story. He was thrown in the lion's den, and uh, the angel protected him. I know a couple years ago I needed $500 to pay a bill on December 17th. And, uh, you know, I started praying. I kind of like got a little wavery and like, Lord, I need $500, but, you know, I don't know if it's going to happen type thing. And God always reminds me, he said, I've always taken care of you before. Why don't you trust me now? 
Amen. But when we go through a difficult time or have a bill due or something, like, yeah, maybe not this time, right? But, you know, I went to the mailbox on December 17th, and a neighbor just down the road from here doesn't come to church here. Her and her husband thanked me for keeping this church open and five hundred dollar check. It wasn't four hundred, wow. wasn't five twenty five. It was five hundred dollars. Exactly what I needed, and I needed it that day. Amen. She could have sent it two days before. <laughs> and I always marvel because I didn't go out and put in an article in the paper. Pastor needs five hundred dollars. <laughs> Then it wouldn't be quite the miracle that God does in our life. But it seems like the Lord always comes through. Amen. Amen. And, you know, when he says increase our faith, I think what he's trying to tell us is let's just keep the faith that we've had from the beginning. Just keep trusting the Lord. Trust in every hour of things that are happening. God's going to bless us, take care of us, and, and uh, keep our house Keep it warm and keep the electricity on. God is faithful. He's faithful to us today. Amen. And then verse number six, he says, And the Lord said, If he had faith as the grain of a mustard seed, he might say to the sycamore tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey. But which of you having a servant, well, we don't want to read that verse yet, but verse six there, Having faith as a grain of a mustard seed. Now, that sycamore tree, a lot of translations call it the mulberry tree. Now, you know, I know mulberries have really small little seeds on them, and we have mulberry trees grow on their own around our place there, and I've taken a bobcat and picked them out and replaced them in a different place so they'd be in a nice area. But when I moved to my place, I built a chicken house right next to a, a mulberry tree. And I thought the chickens would have a heyday with those mulberries. They don't seem to eat mulberries. And, uh, and it's purple around the chicken house in the fall. I mean, it's terrible. And the roof is stained totally purple. It's a green roof, but it's purple in the fall. Oh, but, uh, my wife just loves those mulberries. She picks those mulberries and... But, you know, if we had a faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you know, he says we could do a lot of things. And, of course, mu little is much when God is in it. Amen. 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 And I'm so grateful God can take me as a human being and use my life and make me the man or the woman I need to be, that God is working in my life for a reason and a purpose to fulfill his commands and his obligations that he wants to do in my life and so I got to be faithful to him I got to be faithful to him yeah. now have I questioned God once in a while I have yes I have and you know I love I wanted to live to be 85 at least and have a good body so I never smoked or drank or did drugs and you know uh here I am, 62 years of age, struggling to hang on to life some days. But God has a reason, God has a purpose, and I know the purpose is, is to keep me humble. Hmm. You know, Friday night, you know, Friday at noon I was feeling good, and Friday night, you know, I felt all this phlegm coming up in my stomach, and all of a sudden I feel like I'm drowning, I can't <coughs> breathe, and... And, uh, oh, wow, all of a sudden you start crying out to God again. And, Lord, keep me going. I want to stay alive. I mean, if it's your will. I mean, uh, Kelly said, I'm not ready for this moment. You know, God takes you home. And, and we're never ready for that moment, right? We're never ready. But it always gets me, it always gets me to realize how valuable my life is and how precious every day is. You know, you know, like I said last Sunday, if God gave us everything we wanted, made everything go the way we wanted it to go, we would be so proud and cocky. We'd be way up here. God could never get our attention. We have to go through trials and tribulations to help us to stay the person that we need to be. Right. And some of us, like me, are hard-headed, and so God has to spank me more often. <laughs> Amen. 
And, you know, we have to realize that God is working in our life and for a reason and a purpose. And, you know, my children, I have three children and they're all different. And, but God has taught me a lot of things in raising those three children. I asked God, why didn't you make them all like my first daughter? <laughs> you know, I mean, because, you know, I've got it figured out. And it gives me Jeremy. He's different than Jessica. And then Janessa was different than Janessa. Isn't that amazing how you, you know, you get the same father, the same mother. But two kids can be so different. <laughs> have different temperaments. And it's like they don't come with the instructions how to raise them, right? <laughs> and it takes a lot of prayer to raise kids. Lord, give me the wisdom how to teach them, how to discipline them, how to encourage them, how to be the father and mother I need to be. But I guarantee you, if you have faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, He will give you the faith to do what you need to do in your missions of life. And so we have the faith. It took faith to believe Christ to save you. And now you have that faith to keep you going. You have the Holy Spirit working in your life. Amen. And that gets me excited. So no matter what happens in my life, I can finish being a Christian right up to the end. Amen. Amen. Now he changes course here in verse number 7. He says, But which of you having a servant plowing or feeding cattle will say unto him, by and by, when he has come from the field, go and sit down to meet, and will not rather say unto him, make ready wherewith I may sup and gird thyself and serve me, till I have eaten and drunken, and afterward thou shalt eat and drink? Doth he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I troll not, he says. So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was only our duty to do. And this is an interesting passage. I've had to study it a few times. But basically what he's saying here is, what thanks do you really have when... You like you go to work and you're getting a paycheck for working that hour. You just do what you're supposed to do. Now, when I worked in the Stotch Brothers farm, I found out people actually lived this way. I had to get a cow out of the barn because I had to work on it. I was, you know, I was the vet there as well as the herdsman. I had to get her out to do something to her. And there's 100 cows in each barn. If you've ever been a farmer, it takes a little while to get the cow up to the front of the barn. But this Mexican guy went by. He was taking the cows into the milking parlor. I asked him if he would open the gate for me so I get the cow out there in the runway so I keep taking her to the hospital. He looked at me and he said, I didn't get, I didn't get hired to open your gate. He said, that's not in my job title. I'm just taking cows up to the milking parlor. Now, if I wasn't a Christian, I would have said a few things. <laughs> <laughs> Took me a while to get that cow up there. And if you ever worked with cows, you get a little soupy and, you know, you get a little dirty. And uh, he would not open that gate because that wasn't his job title. And uh, frustrating, I had to call somebody else to come down and open the gate for me so I get the cow out of the barn. But... People are that way, and he said, you know, if you get a paycheck to do what you're supposed to do, well, that's your duty. And, you know, as Christians, there's a lot of things that we do, you know, because it's our duty to do them. And what thanks do we have? But as a believer, I should want to go above and beyond what I'm asked to do type thing. Amen. I need to go above the call of duty. And, you know, maybe I'm not the janitor of this church, but if I see something on the floor, I need to pick it up. I need to do more than just what I'm called to do. I'm just a preacher. I'm not supposed to pick up dirty stuff. I mean, what thanks do we have as that type of person? I think we have to get in the framework, Lord, use my life. I want to be a blessing 
I want to go above and beyond the call of duty. I want to do above and more than what I'm actually called to do as a believer and to continue on to serve him. And I have faith that God will reward me according to his blessings in heaven. Amen. 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 I want to close with Hebrews chapter 11. We're talking about faith, you know, and he talked about faith in Habakkuk last Sunday. In Habakkuk 2.4 he says that uh, God is happy with faith. And in the New Testament he talks about this many times that we need to have faith. <clears throat> In the Lord Jesus Christ. But he explains what faith is here in Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. And then look at verse number 6. But without faith, it is what? Impossible. Impossible to please God, or please Him. For he that cometh to Him must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that what? Diligently, Diligently seek Him. Diligently seek Him. And you know, as he says in Habakkuk, you know, the just shall live by faith. And he says that 219 times in the New Testament, the just shall live by faith. By faith. By faith. And we got to have faith in him. And he says in verse number one, it is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things yet not seen. And when I work with somebody who's an alcoholic, I have to have faith to believe that God can save that man or woman and change their life. I gotta see them a non-alcoholic, though I see them always drunk. If that makes sense to you. I gotta see that this man who's abusive to his wife all the time, that God can save him and make him a loving, godly man for the honor and glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's bow in a word of prayer. Father, thank you for this day. We thank you for the word of God. We thank you for the Bible. Lord, give us that faith that we need to continue on in our journey. May we never doubt you, what you're doing in our lives. We know you're still on the throne. And now I pray that you bless each one of us. Give us your blessings upon us. Here with our fellowship downstairs with this potluck dinner. May it be a blessing as we uh, fellowship together over food and we pray this in Jesus name Amen, Amen.